All right, so I'm going to do a analog to 04 air unit conversion in this video. And I try to pick a build that's kind of a typical analog build to give you an idea of what the process is like to switch over. And this is the 04 air unit light with uh, the beta FPV um, dampening mount. And I'm using this because this has a 19 millimeter mount point across the side here. And that's what this uh, particular frame requires. And a lot of your older analog builds are going to have like an analog camera and a VTX in the back. And of course, in this case, the uh, 04 air unit is probably going to just stick it on top of the flight controller here. Uh, if you're wondering, this is the Diatone. I think this is the L3, I believe. Pretty old, and uh, I've been I've not been flying it much, kind of sitting around. And so it's time to put the analog uh, away and go for 04 in this one. And I just wanted to show you what this weighs before we do the conversion. Uh, in case you're wondering if the rumors are true that if you add 04 to an analog quad, switch it over, the weight is going to double. Well, we'll find out after we do the conversion here. If it goes from 120 grams to 240 grams, let me know in, down in the comments if you believe that to be true. And uh, well, let's go. I'm going to actually add this Express LRS receiver as well. So let's go ahead and put that on just so people don't think I'm cheating. Adding on a 100 gram Express LRS receiver. So here it is with the receiver that will go on as well. And we're at 121.85 grams. So I think I should be able to get this uh, done without taking the props off. Um, yeah, pretty basic. There's just these mount points for the VTX in the back here. I'm gonna disconnect the antenna. I will probably reuse this antenna even though it's right-hand circular polarized. And if you guys are wondering if it matters if it's right-hand or left-hand, it doesn't. And I'll show that you'll get plenty of video in range, no problem. You'll see that later on. And obviously take off the camera. I'll remove the top plate, of course. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to probably rewire this because it's all wired for analog. And we'll talk about that after I get this top plate off. All right, so here's what it looks like with the top plate off. I'm probably gonna keep this plastic TPU part here, uh, 3D print part, and stick the receiver in here. That's what that's actually meant for. It's probably gonna make the removing of the VTX a little bit tricky. I not sure so like i'm gonna keep this here this is for the receiver that's on your one i think this is going to be even though it's for the vtex this might work for the air unit so i might keep these these three are definitely for analog the analog camera here so i'm going to get rid of that i'm going to actually just um desolder those three wires there and i'm going to have to find a wiring diagram for this old diatone boards uh f411 based uh flight controller but yeah, just take the uh, camera out, take the VTX out, and we'll see what that looks like after those are out. All right, so I had to make a few changes to how I was gonna put this together. I was hoping it would be a little more simpler, but um, there's not a lot of space between the flight controller and the air unit that's gonna sit on top of here. There's a little bit of space, so I had to remove the wiring that was here for the other receiver. So I'm not gonna use this receiver that came with this little plug. And uh, just, there's just too many cables and it just I couldn't get everything to fit. So I'm not gonna use that. And I decided to uh, put in a smaller receiver here. It's one with a ceramic antenna. And I made the wires nice and flat here and taped it down so that they wouldn't vibrate because it's pretty close to the uh, gyro. And then another problem that you're probably going to experience with a lot of older analog builds, like this one here, is it does not have an adequate five volt regulator. It's five volts and two amps. It's not gonna be enough. You will have brownouts. Um, so I added a nine volt regulator down here. This is one of these um, Matek uh, BECs that's uh, switchable between nine volts and five volts. And you have to solder a bridge here to make it nine volts. And we'll go up to 1.5 amps, which is enough to power the uh, O4 air unit, which is a nine watt power draw at max power. And I had to uh, remove the uh, VTX wiring for the analog VTX, because obviously this is a totally different setup for DJI. And I did um, 
uh, wire up my UART connection here in UART 2. This, uh, the uh, Express all over receiver is on UART 1. And then this is that plug that's going to go into the air unit here on the side. Uh, so, so basically, uh, at this point, yeah, so what we have here is we have the battery power. At, basically, this is going to be 4S. And um, if I ran the battery power straight to the air unit, that would fry the air unit. So you don't want to do that. That's why I have the uh, BEC. So I have the power coming from the battery. I have a solder there. And I have some wires going to the BEC. There's an input on the other side. It's just a little hard to see under the capacitor. And that's going to put in, so it's like on this particular BEC, it's 6 to 30 volts and then 9 volts out. On these two wires here, they go to the air unit. So you're going to have this problem on some of these older analog bills that don't have a 9 volt uh, or 10 volt BEC for DJI. A lot of them don't, like these older ones. And so you'll have to come up with your own BEC solution. I'll put a link in the description to this Matek BEC. Pretty easy to pick up. I think they come in a three pack and it's not too expensive. Um, obviously, if you have a board that has a DJI plug or has a 9 volt BEC, then you just wire it directly to that 9 volt BEC pad and then you're good to go. And of course, in any of these uh, micro builds, you know, these um, the, the, air, the 04 light is meant for really meant for 2S or 3S builds, but obviously, you can put it into a 4S build like this one here, a 3 inch. And even larger, I mean, you could put them into a 5 inch on 6S. You just have to make sure you have either the onboard 9 volt BEC or you have to add your own BEC. So um, it has proper uh, voltage and current to power the air unit. So um, also, I, I, as, as I said, I removed the VTX and the analog camera. I also cut off some of these uh, 3D printer parts that I'm not going to use. Right here, this is for the receiver tray. Obviously, I put them in front there, so I don't need that. So I cut this off to save a little bit of weight. I am still going to use the antenna mount here for the existing antenna. And I'm going to plug that into the UFL port on the air unit. And then also uh, remove these TPU parts for the antenna mount in the back, because obviously my antenna is mounted here in the front. So at this point, it's going to be pretty simple. Just mount the air unit here. Put the nuts on to secure it, plug it in, um, pl uh, mount the antenna here, plug in the antenna, and then mount the camera. And I did have to remove the standoff here in the front because it was I saw it was interfering. So that's this right here and the screws. I will um, add those back in at the end to show you what uh, I removed so you can have a more fair comparison on the weight. But yeah, I'll go ahead and mount the parts in here. Before I put the top plate on, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so we got the antenna installed and plugged in, air unit mounted, and I, you know, I, I didn't really want to try and find some longer screws. I probably could have. There's there's space above here, so you know, it's possible to do that. I just wanted to make this as low profile as possible, and yeah, there's very little room there between the air unit and the flight controller, so hopefully we won't have any vibration issues. Um, I have the uh, camera in the mounting here in the front here with the soft mounting and it's in the front screw here and I did check that these standoffs are the camera cage is not in the video. Uh, we'll have to see how it handles the vibrations. This is a much more powerful setup than I, was, I had this on previously, like a 1S setup or 2S setup. So going to be in the 4S, a lot more vibrations. We'll see how this handles it. I try to route the cable so that it's only touching right here. So we'll see what happens with that. But let's go ahead and put the top plate back on and we'll put the, um, we'll do a final weight measurement. All right, so here it is all together, top plate on. Pretty clean build actually. Then that camera cable isn't touching the top plate. So camera should be nicely floating in here, but we'll see if we get any jello in this setup or not. Um, yeah, pretty simple to do overall. And here is what it weighs. 118.62. Uh, put the parts that I took off back on, including the standoff. 122.6. So, went up a couple grams. Yeah, so at this point, it's going to go ahead and go for a flight, and we'll talk about how it flies during the flight footage. 
All right, so here's the uh, flight footage from the uh, Roma L3. And as expected, this uh, camera mount from Beta FPV, while it's supposed to reduce vibrations, it still isn't able to eliminate all of them. So you're able to see, still see some. I did have a couple of videos already on uh, the Jello problems. I will be talking about that some more in a future video, but on this one, of course, this is going to pretty much conclude this one here. But do want to show that it is working. Everything is working fine. The BEC is working fine. We're getting video. No issues running this on 4S. And uh, I think just basically I need to just create a TPU mount for the uh, camera module and just remount it. And I think that'll solve all the problems. Um, there's a lot of them on Thingiverse. So if you're wondering where you can pick those up, I have been noticing a lot of them showing up in Thingiverse. And there's also ones on Colts 3D. Although um, some of those on Colts 3D are, do cost a little bit of money. Usually it's like a dollar or less than a dollar to pick up a print or an STL file. If you're looking for the a little bit nicer ones, the, the ones on Colts 3D you have a little bit more refined versus the ones that are free and Thingiverse. So anyway, um, you can see the flight footage here, just kind of cruising around. If I'm not you know, going to full throttle doing any kind of aggressive maneuvers it doesn't show any vibrations it's pretty smooth video actually um so yeah but of course this one here i think it's going to be more for fun more aggressive flying a little bit of freestyle so i'm definitely going to have to swap out that camera mount going to get rid of that uh, beta fpv one and print a tp one and uh, if you want to see more content on this let me know in the uh, comments below um i may show some more later if i uh, come up with a alternative uh, camera mount for this Anyway, that'll do it for this video, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.